We have all been talking about these stunning photos from everyone who were lucky enough to witness the Aurora Australis at the weekend. You're all wondering, why did it happen? When are we ever going to see it again? Can I see it tonight? Well, Dr Carl is joining us to talk about this phenomenon. Dr Carl, good morning to you. Good morning, Dr Lisa. Uh, where did you see it? What did you do? I can see this uh, uh, aurora. I have seen the aurora both in the northern and southern hemispheres. And basically the aurora is God's television set in the sense that um, the atmosphere lights up. Um, will I run through the physics of how the sun oh, does it? I'd love you to. Absolutely. OK, so every second the sun uh, throws out about a million tonnes of charged particles, protons and electrons. Every now and then it has a hissy fit. And instead of throwing out a million tonnes from its entire huge surface area, it throws out a billion, a thousand times more, or 10 billion, and from just a little small area. By small, I mean, you know, twice the size of the Earth. And most of the day, they just go off into space, and most of the time they miss us. Every now and then, these balls of super hot charged particles hit the Earth. Now, the Earth has a magnetic field protecting it, and they hit the magnetic field and they go to the north and south magnetic fields and then come into the atmosphere there. And then the charged particles hit the atmosphere, and then they make the atmosphere light up. At high altitudes, you get the oxygen giving you a bluey colour. At lower altitudes, more of a reddy colour. And so we're getting this nice aurora on both sides of the equator, and it's just free from the sun. Unfortunately, in some parts of the world, you've got cloud cover and you miss out. But if you are having clear skies, you should go out and see it. Oh, it is so magical. We're looking at the pictures there now. Uh, and now I'm struck by the fact that you said you didn't see this one. I mean, you've seen, you, you did say you've seen it in the north and the south before. What was going on, Dr Carl? Have you, you're not getting blasé about it all, are you? <laughs> um, no, um, uh, global warming is real. We're having uh, lots of cloud cover and storms. And so if there's clouds in the way, you ain't going to see it. OK. Now, the big one was the Carrington event of 1859 where the sun threw out huge blobs and the auroras were visible to within, wait for it, 18 degrees of the equator. Wow. Panama and Hawaii. And the aurora was so bright that it woke people up who thought it was sunrise. It was so bright you could read a newspaper by it. Now, the charged particles were coming into the atmosphere and their electromagnetic energy and the only electronic -y stuff we had was the telegraph way back then, you know, dot, 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 dash, dash, dash. The long wires picked up the energy and s sparks jumped off so that some telegraph operators were electrocuted and the, ele the electric telegraph would run without the batteries being connected and some sparks jumped off and set fire to some of the stations. Now, we've had some recent big auroras um, that are, or, or these cosmic mass ejections, CMEs, that have blown up massive power transformers in the northern and southern hemispheres. And a big one like the Carrington event would shut down a lot of stuff. Um, last time a big one hit there, over the last couple of decades, there have been satellites that have died in orbit. At the moment, we have about 7,500 working satellites in orbit, and two-thirds of them are Starlink satellites, the uh, Elon Musk ones, and we'll see, uh, when we get the data back, how many of them died. Wow, it's fascinating. You know, when we were talking about who could see it here in Australia, people in Mackay said that they could see it. Is that kind of unusual? Mackay? Yeah, Mackay. That, that's awfully close to the equator. So this is a big one. Um, on a scale going one to five, it's around four and three quarters, 4.9. But there have been bigger ones in the past, as I mentioned, the Carrington event. Right, so do we know when we might get another one or is it just a random thing that the sun sets off these billions of rays? We can tell by looking at, wait for it, earthquakes on the sun. Right. So the sun rotates roughly once every 27 days or 30 days, depending on whether you're at the equator or the pole. It has differential rotation. And what happens is the sun rotates and then there's this hot spot on the surface. And then it comes around and it throws something at us. We can get warning of that by looking at the vibrations on the surface. The area is called helio, which means sun, size, ground, homology. So you're looking at surface earthquakes, but they're sunquakes on the sun. And from that, from the waves bouncing across the sun, you analyse this side of the sun and you say, oh, there's something 
on the other side of the sun that's going to come around and hit and rotate. And there's a very small chance that the ball of stuff that'll hit out will be aimed at Earth. So do we get any warning? We get a little bit of warning from that. And also the fact that there is an 11 year sun cycle and we're heading towards the peak of it. So if we're lucky, we'll get more. But on the other hand, we do not want our electronic toys like our watches and our computers and our GPS to drop dead on us. OK, so it's kind of win-lose, but yes, <laughs> exciting pictures and we've loved getting them all from everyone. Dr Carl, and love your explanation. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Dr Lisa.